first impression You OPN We should be close to friends If you OPN Engaging is on my agenda Request my chariot to get ya The doors OPN Take the hot road and hop in First impression You OPN We should be close to friends If you OPN Engaging Hi guys, welcome back to The Ratchet Christian. My name is Asmao and I am The Ratchet Christian and today we have a guest. Hi. Do you want to introduce yourself or should no, I introduce you? Okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, good. Because I want to introduce you. Um, so guys, this is my friend Nadia Nicole. I'm so excited. Um, this is the beginning of our series, Dope Women. And when I thought about like who would be the first person that I want to have on my Dope Woman series, you came to mind because I love you and you're dope. I'm like, I don't mess up my hair. <laughs> Lay my head lightly on you, but it's like you came to mind because you're amazing. You do amazing things, and I want you to come and tell the people the amazing things that you do. So, as I said, your name is Nadia. Where are you from? What do you do? Tell the people about yourself. We want to know. Um. So yeah, my name is Nadia Nicole. The Nadia Nicole Instagram. Okay. Uh, I'm originally from Louisiana. Um, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I was born there, but raised in Houston. So I am a Texas woman. Raised in Hottie. Yes. No. <laughs> it's okay. I was about to say, it's, it's the Ratchet okay. Christian. So if you feel the need, they will understand, okay? Like, I've created a space for us. This I is feel a, comfortable. This, this is, is a why space. I feel comfortable here. <laughs> Um, so yeah, originally from Houston, I've been in LA for three years now, um, pursuing my career here. Doing hair, I work at a salon in El Segundo, and I also work at a salon in North Hollywood. So yeah, I kind of dibble and dabble in a lot of different things in the hair industry. Mm -hmm. So she be working. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know if I'm going to insert the clips in the middle or at the end, but Nadia came over and trimmed my ends for me, and I thought it was going to be scary because she was going to cut it all off, but as you can see, it's still here, honey. She got a top knot. I got a top knot, okay. honey. Okay, so Nadia is an amazing hairstylist out in LA. And um, you do natural hair, mm -hmm. you do all kinds of hair. Mm -hmm. What's the one cut that you just got certified? The Diva in? Cut. The so Diva yeah, cut. I love naturals, I love curly hair. So if you're looking for a curly hair specialist, I would love to get my hands on your curls. All curl types, I am a fan. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she will the better. take care of your, your natural hair for you. Um, Okay, so that is what you do, but I want to know about you and Jesus. You know, tell us a little bit about your relate. Do you have a relationship with Jesus? Tell us about Jesus. Do you know Jesus? When did you meet Jesus? Jesus. Yes. So I have been a fan of Jesus. I'm his home girl. We've been friends for a long time. Me and my home girl. <laughs> um, I actually I come from a family of Christians. So my grandfather was a pastor of a church in Louisiana. So um, my lineage goes all the way back to my grandfather, my father, my aunts, uncles. So I come from a family of just like believers in Christ. So faith was never foreign to me. Like I didn't have to grow up discovering who Jesus was. Like it was always taught in my household who he was and we always stood in faith. Um, so as I've gotten older, my relationship with God has grown on an individual level. And especially being here in LA, like mm -hmm. you learn and you grow in your faith. So I feel like this is where I've actually um, put my roots, um, planted my roots here in LA. Um, but yeah, I've known Jesus all my life. Um, we've had a relationship. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, well, I didn't even mention we met each other at church. Yeah, actually, that's how Nadia mm -hmm. and I know each other. We both go to Mosaic, and we both uh, were serving on the broadcast team at the time, and mm -hmm. so we were doing Jesus things together, and that's how we met. We met each other serving. Yeah. So if you're looking for good friends, you're looking friends. for good and godly friends. I remember I used to pay, pray for Christian friends, you know, because I didn't have that many, or at least that many who were. Um, trying to walk it out you know what i mean you know so now that i i have them like most of my friends are christian now and it wasn't always that way so it's just such a blessing that i got to meet you and so many other people through serving you know so if you're looking for good and godly friendships serve at church that's how you can get to meet people um around your age that are you know doing like things yeah like-minded exactly, like -minded, mm -hmm. exactly. And um, doing just like you said, like minded and doing the things that you want to do or interested, whatever. Me and Nadia have a great time. <laughs> we hang out, we have fun, we talk about Jesus, and it's just like cool. 
Yeah. You know, Jesus is cool. Jesus okay. is cool. Okay, and it's he doesn't. He, it's not weird. So don't make it weird. Because uh, some people can be like weird. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When it comes to like, you can still be regular. Yeah. You can still be regular and ratchet. You okay. know, and love Jesus all at the same time. You see, like he's okay. You see, the true. Bible does not say don't be ratchet. True. This is very true. I like okay. that. Wow, I didn't know you were gonna bring a word today, but but you did. That's a word right there. Well, let's not look up what ratchet means in Urban Dictionary. No, let's not. I, I, I looked at the regular di uh, definition of ratchet, and I was just like, oh, but okay. So I try to like make it like real spiritual, like that's deep Jesus. Like it's a tool that you use to fix things. I'm like, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna focus because I get really like distracted because I'm just excited that you're here. But yeah, so we know what you do, we know about your relationship with Jesus, and now I want to know like with your craft, you know, the gift that God has given you to be able to do hair and you know be a talented hairstylist. Do you merge your faith with your craft? Like as you're working, do you do you like talk about Jesus with your clients? Like, or do you do your best to like uh, I don't want to say like leave it separate, but it's like how do you like intertwine your faith and your your gift um i feel like that's such a it's not really complex but i feel like faith in my career can go hand in hand as far as my personal life mm -hmm. and then also as far as like how i engage with my clients also um because you know they say hairstylists with therapists mm -hmm. so being able to discern or um lean into conversations that may be tough like if a client has come to you crying or going through a divorce or anything like God placed those moments in my chair for me to actually pour into my clients. Even though I've never been through divorce, God will give me the words to say mm -hmm. to pour into my client to encourage them like spiritually to like let them know that he's there for them and he cares for them. Um, so I feel like the spiritual of my relationship with God has definitely helped me in my craft and even as far as like financially or like um, in my career just leaning on faith and like trusting that God is going to take care of me because our income is not necessarily consistent so my faith has grown even just being an independent contractor as a hairstylist so I feel like my career is all wrapped into one with my faith with God because I have to lean on them financially I have to lean on them like to encourage me like to speak to clients and even those moments in fear because I'm not really a talkative person like I feel energy and I speak when God leads me to speak mm -hmm. um, but he has to like push me to that point I'm not always the one to force myself into conversations or to engage in certain things that I don't feel like is my place but mm -hmm. when God nudges me then I definitely I go head in and like say like whatever he's led me to say in those moments and I remember a season where I would literally anoint my hands with oil before really? I would touch any of my clients hair I was like I have growing hands wow. I want to make my clients hair grow like Listen. that's something that I'm so passionate about I love yeah. that. That's so beautiful. Imagine somebody doing your hair whose hands are anointed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why you just gave me a cut and it, <laughs> and it went just fine. But it's like that. That's so beautiful. You know, I, I never even even knew that, and I I really love that. Um, so, do you have like any? I don't want to say like advice, but like maybe hair care advice or it's quarantine. She came to my house and, and did my hair. We're distancing in in the spirit. We're socially distancing in the in the spirit. You know, but it's like the anointing is right here. The house is covered. You know, and so I. Luckily, my friend's a hairstylist, so I was able to get my ends trimmed. But for those people who don't have a friend that's a hairstylist and can't get to the kick, can't get to the salon right now, like, do you have any hair care um, at home like tips for them? Um, I think right now um, the best tip that I can give everyone is just stay insane. Um, and I know a lot of people are like going crazy about, oh, I need my hair done. I can't wash my hair. Like, what am I supposed to do? Um, and anxiety is like running rampant just around the world, um, and just a sense of panic. Um, so what I've been just trying to encourage my clients just to relax and like find time to like self care and like figure out how to wash your hair. Even if you need to call me and we do a tutorial, or I help you. Or um, and then also just. Just like little practices of massaging your temples. Mm -hmm. Relax. I started doing that so I could grow my edges back and honey, they're coming back. Seriously, I'm like no, massaging my, my scalp. Literally. Yeah. Massaging your scalp, massaging your temples will help to relieve stress. It relieves pain. It takes your mind off of whatever the thing is that you're frustrated or thinking about or the panic or anxiety that's in the world. Like just close your eyes, massage your temples. You're going to make me fall asleep. I haven't been to sleep yet. Relax. Relax. I did my edges. Yes. <laughs> so, okay, we'll, just, we'll just do it in the spirit.
spirit. Then. But no, literally, that would help 110 times. Because you're taking your mind off of whatever you're stressed out about or whatever you're thinking about currently, and you're just relaxing. Um, and it also helps with tension headaches. If you have migraines or tension headaches or frustration a lot, um, just a simple practice. Because I know we're all feeling it and going through it. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's that's practical. Knowing that the stress that you feel can also affect your hair. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you you relax, you know, and get your body to relax, that's more blood flow. Uh, right, to, it stimulates the blood flow to the scalp. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so before I let you go, I'm just gonna spring this question on you because it came to mind. I oh, need. Okay. <laughs> so this is a this is a surprise, you know, and I think this is gonna be helpful to somebody out there. Can you kind of like tell us about? washing your hair for african-american women because growing up i heard that you know i don't want to say like dirt helps your hair grow but it's like keeping your hair like the oils and all the stuff in your scalp like you're not supposed to wash your hair too much like i remember when i told one of my friends i washed my hair like once every two weeks she was like girl you ain't white why are you washing your hair that much i'm like it's not even that much but it's like can you talk to my african-american watchers you know just anybody else either uh Who's, who's ever watching about like how would you recommend how often should women of color wash their hair I wash my hair every two weeks sometimes once a week depending on the hairstyle and what it is that I do um, it and also like I told you my hair loves moisture so I just love to get my hair wet but can you just talk about that a little bit okay so this is a very tricky question only because it's a uh, per person like it it depends yeah. on the person but i would say for good hygiene mm -hmm. you want to wash your hair every week at least once a week for african americans mm -hmm. i know other cultures may wash once their a hair week. that's a lot like every other day or three times a week because they have excessive oil buildup but our hair doesn't necessarily get super oily so we don't have to wash it as often but if you feel like your scalp is, has, has a lot of buildup, then that's when you want to make sure that you get your hair shampoo or shampoo your hair soon because the oil clogs your scalps and it prevents hair growth. Well, not mm. necessarily prevent, I don't want to use that word, but it clogs your pores, which can slow down the rate of hair growth. Mm. Um, so keeping a clean scalp will promote healthy hair growth. So every week, if you can go two weeks without your hair being like super dirty and oily and greasy, um, go two weeks. It just depends on the person, honestly. Yeah. But either way, it's important to wash your hair and wash your hair regularly and even wearing yeah. hairstyles that give you access to your hair. Um, is something to consider as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, during this quarantine, I feel like I've washed my hair probably at least once or twice a week. Wow. I'll co-wash it and i wash it. Okay. So I'll co-wash it one day and then I'll wash it once a week. Mm. Mm -hmm. And your hair has grown so much too. Like you just cut your hair off like it was like, it was literally that short mm -hmm. like this time last year and now you caught up with mine. And <laughs> I've been growing it for five years. So whatever you're doing, <laughs> whatever you're doing, start doing it for me. Lord, whatever you've done for her, what Jesus, I've doing? seen that you can, you can Talk work a miracle without me. me. <laughs> no, but really, though, no, like, I don't want to be left behind, Jesus. You know, like, the blessing is on her. Get it on me, Jesus. Let it grow. And I've also been, it sounds really weird, but I've been praying for hair growth. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Jesus, like, you created this body, and it's supposed to work. There's a reason why my hair should not be growing. Yeah, you know? eat healthy. Eat it, have a healthy diet. Yeah. Like put good things, not processed foods into your diet. Mm -hmm. Keep a clean scalp, and you'll see it. You'll Everyone see it. hair, everyone's hair growth is different though. Mm -hmm. Like everyone's hair growth rate is different. It doesn't grow as fast as some. So don't make a judgment like, oh my god, like her hair grew so fast. Mm -hmm. Like why am I not growing? Like no, nurture it, love it, and it'll it'll give it back to you. Well. That's all I have. Did you want to add anything else? Did you? Yeah, this is your moment, your floor. No, love you guys. Let's get ratchet. Let's get ratchet. And also, let's clean our scalps. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, well, thank you, Nadia, so oh, much thank for you. coming. I had so much fun. I think you might be a regular guest. You may have won yourself a co hosting spot oh, okay. on the Ratchet Christian because this was so much fun, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to put your social media information so you guys can find Nadia. If you're in LA, you need a hairstylist, she's your go to girl. She's going to take good care of you, and I recommend her because she's awesome. She loves Jesus, and she's great at what she does. So. That's you it. Guys stay safe. And stay and be safe. healthy. Yes. Social distancing. Yes. We're practicing in five, four, four three, three, two, one.